Hey guys, Vikas over here and this is Weird Genius. Guys, today I am with a new tutorial around Raspberry Pi and ESP8266. So in this video, we will try to interface or interact ESP8266 module from Raspberry Pi using standard AT commands. So for this, we will write a Python based program which will send AT commands to the ESP8266 connected to the Pi using the serial port. And we will try to send some data from our Raspberry Pi to a server using HTTP GET call. So it might not be useful if you are using Raspberry Pi 3 because that has onboard Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. But it will certainly work around Raspberry Pi 0 or any other Raspberry Pi boards. So I will start with one disclaimer that if you are using this method from like one Python application to interact with our, our ESP266 module using the IT commands, this will enable only the network connectivity to the app. So your OS will not be able to have internet, internet or like network access by using this module. So standard SSH and FTP protocols will not work over here. So being said there guys, let's get started. So guys, this schematic is showing the way you need to connect our ESP8266 module with the Raspberry Pi. So over here, I have made one universal ground from the ground pins of the Raspberry Pi and from TX0 and RX1 or the TX RX pins of Raspberry Pi, it goes directly to the RXTX pin of ESP8266. As Pi is already 3.3 volt device, we don't need any level shifter that is as required in Arduino. And on the ESP266 side, we need to make the standard connections like connecting the ground pin and GPIO15 to the ground, the VCC to the 3.3 volt, as well as the anode pin, which one is the CSPD over here, it is shown as that is again to the VCC pin, and this one over here is a standard reset circuit. If you are not interested in resetting the module or if you don't want, you can leave the reset pin open, or otherwise, you can just Pull it up by using one register and you can connect the switch in between the pin and the ground. So let's make the connections first and we'll try out our Python application. So after every connection has been made, let's open up in SCP which we'll be using to transfer our code to the Raspberry Pi. So let's log in. And over here on the Raspberry Pi side you can see as app that is terminal.py. So this app will be used to interact with the ESP8266 module by using IT commands. So let's open it up. So this app is basically I have not made it robust because over here I have not used any error handling or exception handling uh, like blocks. So this is straightforward pretty much. This just send out some standard commands and do it waits for if that command has been successfully executed or not. So it again passes out like that. So if you are uh, using regularly for some certain application, you should consider using error handlings and all those things for different blocks of this course. So I have given a link down below in the description to the code over here. So you can go ahead and download it and I have made all the comments to make you understand easily as much as possible. So let's go through the code and we'll then thereafter we'll try to run the code on the terminal. So over here this is standard serial and time that is imported for our Python script because serial will handle all our serial communication and time will be using to provide some delays wherever required. So first is the initialization that is initializing the default serial port on Raspberry Pi. That is the TTY AMA0 with baud rate 115200 that is being supported by ESP8266 by default. And we have set a timeout of 3 seconds. We have used a quick around timeout because I searched a lot of on the internet or so everywhere else to find out certain functions that will like give us a time, uh, like data available on the serial port and or like if data is available. But I didn't come across anything. 
so i just have used the time bound so that whenever the pi sends out some command it waits up to 3 seconds without like time, time timing out so within that time it should get all the data from the sp to ss module so first function over here is read line c here that is over here trying to read 5096 maximum bytes of data from the port or the serial port now this block over here is used to like show the user the sp to ss module has been connected or not so i have set a flag over here that is always true and it comes across the while loop and the script will for at first send one ht command and it responds it will check for okay if it finds okay that means the sp to ss is connected and if not it will slip for 60 second and it the loop will be executed once again and goes on like that but if it has found okay then it will make the flag false so the loop exits now the first command to be used for configuration of sp to ss is the a3 plus cw mode equals 1 that makes the sp to ss in the sta mode or the station mode so again over here we are checking for okay if it is returning us okay then the sp to ss has been configured successfully now next is a3 plus cw jp then it takes two parameters that is the ssid and the password so you should replace these uh, values over here with your own depending upon the network you are trying to connect again same thing it will return okay or error if it is not able to connect so you are checking for okay then if it is like sending out okay will print out that we have successfully connect uh, like connected to the network then next is at plus cw autocon equals 1 that makes this particular connection whatever you have made auto connect whenever the sp266 boots up so if you don't want you can make it zero then next is your at plus afsr that prints out the ip and the mac address of the sp8266 module in case if you want to know whatever the dscp ip it is taken you can check it out now next is all our for the tcp connection where we will be sending our data to the server so first is at plus tcp start then it takes three parameters first is your type of connection that is tcp so if you are using udp and all this configuration totally changes next is your ip server ip address and third parameter is your port so if you are not using uh, the default at port you can come across or if you, you can change the port number change this port number over here and if you are interested to communicate with internet or cloud server you can change the ip address over here with your url now same thing it is checking for okay and it will send out a message that tcp connection has been initialized now to check the tcp connection we are using command at plus cip status so that will print out the connected or not connected whatever the status of the current tcp connection is now next is used to send the command that is at plus cip send and it takes one parameter that is number of bytes you want to send so after successful uh, like execution of this command the esp266 module should return a greater than sign that means it is waiting for the data to be entered by the user so next parameter is obviously the data we need to fetch or need to transfer to the server that is we have mentioned that we are making a get call first then the page on the server you want to send into then the http protocol and it followed by some query returns now this over here the page i have designed you can go through that this is taking only one parameter that is name and you can pass any value over here instead of my name so coming into the page this is a simple php script that is returning whatever data we have sent from our module with some static state that is your name each so certainly you can change this parameter over here or my name value and you can send it to the server again it is checking for okay or not and it will just print out okay we have sent the data to the server something okay. so as soon as we successfully send the data you should see the response from the server on your terminal now finally 
we are closing the connection by using the command at plus cip close followed by carriers return so all commands over here are followed by carriers return only then only they will get executed on the sp processes model so let's move on to the terminal and we'll try to run this app and we'll see what is the responses are on to on the terminal so for that i'm going to use putty this i am having a remote session with my py h you know already so as it is a python script i'll simply use the command sudo python then the script name followed by dot py so over here it has printed some garbage connect it and try again it is going to wait for like 6 seconds i think Yeah, sixty second, sixty millisecond. Sorry. So actually, actually my supply to the ESP two system model was turned off. That's why it was not responding. Let's try to run it again. And over here, you can see it has responded with "It's okay," and you can see device connected message over here. And then again it is configured as sta it was already connected to this network so it first is connected then again it connected and you can see wifi has got ip and over here the dhcp ip has been printed out now it has successfully initialized the tcp connection and it's over here waiting for data to be entered and this total over here is the response from the server so these are all protocol details and all with time and other things and over here you can see it has written the year name is my name my name is the value that we have passed from sp to ccs or raspberry pi to the server and this is a static text that has been returned by the server that we saw in the php script so that's all is this guys hope this will help you thank you thanks for watching